Guys, you're looking at Revelation chapter 18. Now, we ended the last video in 18, but I always like to go back just a little before we get into 19. We'll probably end that series today with going through the 19 through 22. Depends on how long it takes to get through it. But uh, we're going back, and what we had just went through, again, chapter 18 is the fall of Babylon. Notice your subtitle. And it says, you know, in one hour, the judgment came to the great city of Babylon. And the kings of the earth who had committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall be well and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. That's where we were at. We were talking about the fall of Babylon and how the nations seemed to turn against the main center of Babylon here at the end. These ten kings that were given power for one hour and they go after the beast. And we may be seeing that with some of the countries that are starting to side with the BRIC system and getting away from the uh, U.S. petrodollar, things like that. And we are seeing some shifting going on. We don't know how that's going to work out yet. But that's what we've been talking about here. We've got the destruction of Babylon. Now let's go to 19. Okay, we've seen that fall in Babylon, Revelation 19. Now, after all these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. Think about that. For true and righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Hallelujah, and her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Hallelujah. And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. Again, that word many times means revere. And I heard it as it were the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife hath made herself ready. Think about it. We'll go back a few verses, guys, and you'll see to where the, they were handed white robes because they had been killed for the word of God. And to, hear, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. That's what we're talking about. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And he saith unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb, and he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell to his feet to worship him, and he said to me, See, thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. In that marriage, supper of the Lamb, we talk about this throughout the Bible. Here it is. I don't think we're that far from it, because... This new world order is rising by leaps and bounds as you look at the paper each day or the news. Now, think about this also. We're almost through with the book of Revelation. There's three more chapters after this. But it's all been a very simple message. There was a message to the churches in the beginning and uh, to correct themselves or they were going to lose their angel or their candle. And it's continued through there of a warning of the false messiah, the false prophet, the beast, the antichrist, Satan coming all in uh, as a new world order political system. But, guys, it's going to be based on religion. It has to be, and that's why, why the horns have the crowns on them of this beast, not, and the, horn, the crown is not on their head. It's on the horn. And a lot of times that represents spiritual authority. So he, Satan has to come in on a religious beast system in order to deceive the multitude that are going to wander after him. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, 
and in righteousness he does judge and make war. His eyes were as flame of fire, and his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. A lot of us may be in that army, guys. Wouldn't that be nice? Come back and fight for what's right instead of what the wars have been about since mankind began. And think about it. Um, and his name is called the Word of God, this warrior. What are you listening to now as, or you re as you read through this with me? You're listening to the Word of God. It's still here. It's been here from the beginning. It will be here again as the Alpha and the Omega, the end. And that is what's winning the war, the Word of God. Think about it. You can, As you read Revolu uh, Revelation, guys, your mind opens. And you start to see what the new world order and this new beast system is trying to do to everyone. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he traileth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh name written King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that you may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of the captains, and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses, and of them that set on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth, this is what we've been dealing with the whole book right here. And their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. That doesn't work out very well and doesn't last very long. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. And them that worshipped his image, these both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone, and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Notice they always mention this two-edged sword, the sword that proceeded out of his mouth, and that's the burning truth of this word. It cuts both ways. It leaves no one. If, you, if you're if you not doing right, it's going to cut you somewhere. It's going to straighten you up. And these people that decide they don't want to do anything that's right, they're going to be taken out with it. Chapter 20. And we talked about this before. Remember in the first chapter, who had the keys of the bottomless pit and the uh, keys of hell and death? It was Christ. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. That's why people, some people think that the devil or Satan has those keys. It's not. Chapter 1, chapter 9, and chapter 20 tells you who that is. And cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they set upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. No butterfly effect here. And for the word of God, and which has not worshipped the beast, Neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years, that same thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again, very important, until the thousand years was finished. This is the first resurrection. That's the one you want to be in. Not And don't let 20 five throw you out of uh, sync here because what they're talking about the first resurrection happened just above there the ones that lived and reigned with christ a thousand years 
Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Again, first resurrection, that's the ones that are with Christ during the thousand years, won't face a second death. There will be many that will, though, because once that thousand years is over with, we start to open some judgment books. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of prison, and he shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four or quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Think about it. Only a certain group has been with Christ during that thousand years. There's a second group that didn't quite make that, and so this is what's going to happen. It said that they went up on the breath of the earth. Again, the number was as the sand of the sea. Compass the uh, camp of the saints about in beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. That didn't take long, did it? And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. That word is finite. It in Greek means over, done with. And I saw a great white throne in him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. So after this thousand years, guys, we are about to see a new heaven and a new earth at that point, because the old ones no longer exist. They have fled away. It says, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Who was judged? The dead, the ones that were not in the first resurrection with the, and spent that thousand years with Christ. Let's read that one more time just to make sure because this is some of the most important part of the entire Bible because we're at the end of the Bible. And that's what the book of Revelation is about. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Not just faith. But to do these works, you have to have faith. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And the death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. That is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That's why it says you will not, in that first resurrection, you will not experience the second death. But there's a lot of people that will not, will not be judged until that thousand years is over. Then the sea gives up their dead, and that's the multitudes. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. Remember when Christ went into Hades, basically, into the gates of hell and death after he was crucified and resurrected? A lot of people came out of there with him. And they were the ones waiting in the earlier books. Oh, Lord, when will be our blood be avenged? Again, that is the second death. The, if, you live, if you're in the first resurrection for that thousand years, you're not going to be tricked when Satan gets out for a moment. And whosoever again was not found in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Again, it's over. Revelation 21, the new heaven and the new earth. This is one of my favorite chapters because it, it, there's every time I read it, a little more understanding kind of comes through my thick head. And it, something I always think about when we're talking about things coming down from heaven is the chariots of fire that we talked about in the Old Testament. 
says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. The physical things, now you're in your spiritual body. There is no more pain or tears. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new, all things, the animals, us, all of his creation. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And I will give unto him that is a thirst for, of the fountain of the water of life freely. That is, notice the last two sentences or verses or letters in red and so are the next two he that overcometh shall inherit all things and i will be his god and he shall be my son but the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the whoremongers the sorcerers the idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone which is the second death now those sorcerers these pharmacias you know what we're talking about, the liars, the abominable, the abortions, the murderers, the unbelieving, and they're fearful. You can see it in their eyes. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Having the glory of God in her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. And had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, and on the south three gates, and on the west three gates, and on the wall, and the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city, and the gates thereof, and the wall thereof. In the city lieth four square, four walls, and the length is as large as the breadth, and, the, and he measured the city with a reed, twelve thousand furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. A lot of people say that's a cube or a square. Do you, I hope, do you realize, guys, that that also fits a pyramid? The base, the walls, and the, and the width of it. Now, it doesn't say that he went to the top and measured another wall or the top of the wall it doesn't say that but if you look back in history and this is just my opinion we've seen the pyramids evolve from some go up a certain angle then it changes and i think that was changed during construction because it was man's attempt to make the perfect right angle or the right angle triangle out of the pyramids but it's impossible for man to do what God has done here. But they're within feet of each other on the Great Pyramids, guys. When you look at the base of it and the height and the, width and the uh, breadth, it fits a pyramid. And why did all these ancient civilizations want to build these pyramids? But think about what I'm saying again. That's just my opinion. He said he measured the wall there of a hundred and forty and four cubits, and according to the measures of man, that is, of the angel. And the building of the wall of it was as jasper, and the city was pure gold like unto clear glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. 
The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third chalcedona, and the fourth an emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth a topaz, the tenth a chrysoprasus, and the eleventh jacinth, and the twelfth an amethyst. Different color uh, jewels, basically. But again, when you're dealing with the symbology here, understand we're talking about the tribes we're talking about the apostles nothing to get hung up on stay with the message and the 12 gates were 12 pearls and every several and every several gate was of one pearl and the street of the city was pure gold as it were transparent glass and i saw no temple therein for the lord god almighty and the lamb are the temple of it and the city had no need of the sun neither of the moon to shine in it for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Now, got this is important because years ago, and I think I've repeated it maybe once, was in the original book of Adam and Eve. And until they were kicked out of the garden, they did not know what night was. You remember that? You remember the readings that they didn't have no idea. They had never seen anything but light. And for the first time, the sun burnt them. And then when it got dark, they were they hid in a cave, basically, and uh, thought they were going to die. They had never seen it get dark. And Adam tried to kill himself in this book because of that. They, he thought they had sinned so much in that garden, uh, dealing with Satan, that viper, that they had no hope of salvation. But remember that. And so out of the... Out of paradise they came. We started seeing these books being written and seeing the destruction of mankind on this planet. We're going to go back into that paradise. That's why they can never find the origins or the location of the Garden of Eden because it's a spiritual place. You'd have to go through a spiritual gate to get there, not a physical gate. But that's what we're doing. We're going back to that. That's why all this trouble has occurred. Adam was kicked out, him and Eve, out of the spiritual paradise where you, God was the light and Christ was the light into the physical realm. And that physical realm is what we were talking about just a moment ago. There will be no more. There will be a new heaven. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor to it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and the honor of the nations into it, and there shall in no wise enter it, into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. They didn't make it. There's no more room for any of the people that defile or the work abominations or maketh a lie, that it's all been sorted out in the winepress of the wrath of God. So we've made it through all of this, guys. We are in Revelation chapter 22. The whole book has been about warning us what was coming, what will happen. And now in the last book of the entire Bible, we're, you're going to see why it's all worth it. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the trees were for the healing of the nation. This is spiritual. And they shall be no more cursed, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. You understand now about the seal of God and the mark of the beast in their foreheads? And they shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign for ever and ever. This new heaven and earth, that's the solar systems, the universes, all that's faded out. 
spiritual, no darkness. And he said unto me, Those sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophet sent his angels to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. This book has been around for a couple thousand years, and here we are, this last generation, in which these things will be shortly done. Behold, I come quickly, again words in red, Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I heard him, heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship God. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And that is holy, let him be holy still. What they're saying to me is the arguments are over. You want to remain unjust? So be it tired of talking about it we tried to tell people for years things were coming well that time is over with and I behold I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be I am Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end the first and the last blessed are they that do his commandments and they, that they might have right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into that city, the spiritual gates, the tree of eternal life. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers, idolaters and whosoever loveth and make a lie. I'm repeating that again. And here Christ, right here at the end of it, reminds us of the beginning chapter. He said, I, Jesus have sent my angel to testify unto these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, and the bride and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of the book, If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in the book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. He which testifies these things say, Surely I come quickly. The letters in red again. Amen. Even so come, Lord Jesus. The last chapter, the last, or the last verse of the last chapter. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. That's all I can say is amen to that. Hope you do too. Again, we he's talking about don't change anything in the book. Blessed are he that studies these things. And when you commentate on this, you're not trying to change it. I'm not trying to change anything. I'm trying to keep it simple. And of course... None of us are perfect, and we're all going to make mistakes here and there. Doing your best, God knows when you do that, and he knows that you are on the right path. You're looking and you're searching. You're looking for him, you're looking for this eternity. You want, to, you want to be around in your spiritual body. Why? Because it doesn't age. It doesn't get cancer. Your friend, uh, friends and family don't die. There's no more tears. But again, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.